Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, today's webinar. We'll just allow a minute for uh, others to join us. We've had over 100 subscribed to the webinar uh, for this important announcement for the FEA. So um, just in case there are any connection <coughs> problems at all, uh, we'll just give it a minute. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start and uh, welcome to everybody for joining us this morning. A very warm welcome. Um, as I mentioned, exciting development for the FEA in terms of a project that's going to give all of our members insight into information that hasn't uh, previously been available uh, to the industry before. Um, focus very much on the installed base of equipment uh, within the industry. And to bring that all together, uh, we'll have an introduction in just a second from the FEA chairman, Steve Hobbs, followed by Simon Frost, who is the uh, head of the statistics, statistics Committee within the FEA. Then Nicola Gallagher, as head of Insights for Catalyst, will run us through the program and uh, give you the, the clear insight into how it works and what it will deliver. And, that will be followed by the, uh, the sign-up uh, opportunity and how to access the data. And then we've got a Q&A session to round off this morning, which will run for about an hour. Uh, what I will say, if you have any questions, can you please feed them in through the Q&A function and we'll collate those together and put that back to our group of panelists at the end. So a warm welcome from me, Keith Warren, Chief Executive of the FEA, and I'd now like to hand over to our Chairman, Steve Hobbs. Over to you, Steve. Thank you. Hi, good morning all. Uh, Keith, many thanks for the introduction. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Steve Hobbs. Um, I'm the uh, current FEA Chair uh, and Managing Director for Grand Cuisine. Um, it's really just a, a thank you to say uh, to all of you for joining us today. As Keith said, uh, I think we've reached the limit of regards to the number of uh, attendees that we can have uh, on, the, uh, um, uh, on the webinar. Um, and it's really here to launch the FEA Industry Insight, which is an online market intelligence reporting system. Uh, so over the last two years or so, the FEA membership has been working in partnership to develop a detailed reporting system on the actual level of products installed across the entire food service equipment marketplace. This is a report specifically developed by manufacturers and suppliers working in conjunction with independent food service market data specialists to create an up to the minute overview of products placed on the UK market. It's taken numerous meetings and hours of constant review to get to this point. I'd like to thank those who have been involved with this amazing work, be it in group forum meetings, individual time given, along with the help and support of Jocelyn and Adam at the FEA. Specific thanks though must go to Simon Frost for his overseeing of this incredible project along with Julie Barker and Steve Loughton for the independent review of the data generated by the FEA members and working in partnership with Nicola Gallagher and her team at Catalyst in getting to this point of launch. So without further delay, I'd like to hand over to Simon Frost for an overview of the project. Simon, I think you're on mute. Yeah, no, I, sorry. Uh, joys of technology. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank my previous two speakers because they've said just about everything that I was going to say in my piece, but never mind. <laughs> anyway, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us uh, for this uh, exciting webinar this morning. And something that, uh, as Steve alluded to in his opening piece, has uh, been on the uh, drawing boards uh, for many years and has been, you know, a, a, a fairly hard slog to get to where we are now. So uh, anyway, um, 
so really for many years uh, we have all sought to have data that accurately reflects the size of the UK food service equipment market. Data that supports marketing and effective market money spending, uh, sales and chasing opportunities where there may be gaps, and for many our ability to share data both with our own colleagues here in the UK uh, and for many with our colleagues also overseas. There are of course UK market figures available, uh, although these are often found in very costly uh, desktop uh, research company reports. Plus, these are high level forecast numbers, which often give the total market size. Uh, and these are not product specific or sector specific and are based on data often retrieved from the Internet or company's house. Uh, the data is generally out of date uh, and very often tells us something that we all really already know. The FEA we felt that there was a real need for the association to develop a platform for information which went further and deeper into the UK food service equipment market to deliver data that our industry has been crying out for for many years. Data that was granular enough to be product specific by product type and sector specific as well and was always up to date. The project started in earnest in 2019 and has seen a significant investment from the FEA to get the project off the ground and running to the point that we find ourselves at today. The work has been brilliantly managed by Julie Barker and initially by Steve Loughton with the uh, unerring support of Nicola Gallagher at Catalyst and many FEA members who have given up their time to assist. With many hours completing spreadsheets by sector and product type to fill the characteristics that support the data within the portal. The system is supported using the Catalyst database and Power BI, which coupled with the data entry at the front end has delivered what I'm sure will prove to be a very useful source of intelligence for the UK operators of food service markets. The benefits you will see subscribing to this portal will be a unique industry relevant dynamic data set to reflect market changes accompanied by monthly uh, quarterly reports, which will ensure that they give you a better insight into understanding the UK market, the gaps that may exist in your knowledge and how to better align your business with those UK operators that you choose to target. The FAA Business Outlook shows that members are always looking for new channels of distribution for both existing and new products. The portal allows for more, a more strategic approach to maximize your return on investment. As well as a sales tool, it also acts as a marketing and product development tool as well. Knowing what sector is using what product allows for a gap analysis to be made by known sales to buy a company, which in turn can focus marketing spend and the effective use of salespeople's time. The starting point for this is three modules which will cover refrigeration, wear washing and cooking and warming. These can be bought individually or as a package and the details of how to the pricing and how to subscribe will follow by Keith after this presentation. I'm delighted to tell you as well that there are other modules under development and we will share details around these at a later date. I would now like to pass you over to Nicola at Catalyst who will run through the programme with you and show you exactly what the information looks like. Thanks very much. Thank you for that, Simon. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nicola Gallagher, Head of Insights at Catalyst. Um, let me just share my screen with you. OK, so today I'm going to be taking you through the FEA Industry Insight platform. Um, and as Simon touched on earlier, it's a collaboration of um, data and insights from FEA, its members, and here at Catalyst. So to start the project, we got um, an average equipment count uh, per site, and that was pulled together at a subsector level. This is then applied to the market-wide Catalyst database of sites, where we filtered those sites to just include outlets where we believe a piece of commercial equipment would be placed. 
Now, the report that I'm going to show you shortly will be refreshed weekly with new site counts. So any changes in the Catalyst database that are made, you will see that reflected within the report when it gets refreshed on a Sunday evening. The equipment numbers will be reviewed on a quarterly basis um, and we can change those if necessary when, we, when they're reviewed. As well as the report that I'm going to show you now, we'll also be putting together a quarterly executive summary report, which will show the changes in the food service marketplace. So the changes in site numbers, at a sector and subsector level, and therefore, what does that mean in terms of the machine park and how has that changed? And along uh, with that, we'll get some top line sort of summary uh, commentary as well. So without further ado, I will show you the report. So when you subscribe to the report, you'll be sent a link to this web portal along with a username and password. You will then be able to see the reports that you have subscribed to. Now today I'm going to take you through the cooking and warming report. OK, so the reports have got um, numerous tabs down the bottom here. They've all got an overall market summary tab and then a tab for each sector. Now, the summary tab, it shows here, we're obviously just looking at cooking and warming equipment here, but within the food service environment, we're saying that there is 2.7 million bits of cooking and warming equipment across 278,000 sites. And those sites are broken down into group and independent in this split. The table on the left here, this shows the machines by product type. So we can break it down and we can have a look to see how many total bits of kit um, we're saying are within the food service environment. And what is that? What does that average out at per site? We've also got here the pie chart, which shows the split by sector. So here we can see that half of the market of machines is made up of limited service pubs and clubs and education. We can also look at it by a region and we've got a map view here. So you can either hover over the map, it's gonna come up, or you can simply click on the map and it is dynamic and updates this table on the left. So it tells you that in Scotland, we've got 240,000 uh, cooking and warming machines across this many sites and this is the breakdown by sector so you can see how that would be different to the likes of London for example where we've got the majority of the market is made up of limited service and full service whereas in somewhere like Wales the market is made up more of pubs and clubs limited service and education is a big chunk of that so you've got the option of either drilling down this way. We've also got filters down on the right hand side here where you could do you could do the same essentially here. And there's some other uh, filters there. Now, the other thing I will mention is that we've got this date slider. Now, at the moment, this is showing us the total number of sites as at the beginning of this week. What you can do is you can look at what did the food service environment look like as at the 1st of April, going back to the 1st of April last year. 
So if we simply move the slider across, we see that the total sites go from 278,000 to 293,000. So no surprise that the site numbers have come down from April last year to today's date. Now this change in site numbers will be a net effect of any new sites opening and closed sites. But this will obviously become more interesting as we go further along in time and more sites um, will ultimately be closing because of the situation uh, of the pandemic. Okay, so I'll take you on to one of the sector tabs now. And again, all these sector tabs are set out in um, a very similar way. So it's, so it's very easy for you to navigate throughout the report. So having a look at pubs and clubs, again, we can see in total that this is the total number of bits of machine that we're saying is within 45,000 sites. And it shows us the split by product. So we can expand these categories out and look at the detail. And we can also see how the sector is split out. So for pubs and clubs, we look at that um, tenanted free house, managed, private clubs, nightclubs, gastro pubs. And it tells us how many sites, how many machines, and therefore what is the average machine per site. We've also got on these uh, sector tabs, top 20 groups. So this is sorted by the uh, groups that have the, the biggest number of sites. So for instance, we've got Green King here, and there's 2,371 sites within the Green King group. We can look at that into a little bit more detail to look at how that is split by their brands. Or we can actually click on the Green King number and we can see, OK, so how many bits of equipment would we expect to see within the Green King group? So all of these tables and charts are dynamic and you can go between the two and drill down into the different detail. What you're also able to do here is you can actually get down to the lowest level of detail. So again, let's stick with Green King and we want to have a look at, OK, well, I want to have a look at all their tenanted and free house sites. So I'm simply going to right mouse click on that number, drill through and it will take me to the site list. So this gives me a site list of every single Green King tenanted pub, essentially. Uh, it gives you the company name, the postcode, the region that it's in, and the number of machines that we've assigned to that site. Now, if you were to have a Catalyst <coughs> subscription, you would be able to click on the link here and it would take you onto the Catalyst record card where you can see additional kind of information, um, of the relationships. So that pub is it's run independently, but it has an affiliation to Green King. And there are also, it's got a purchasing consortium, wholesaler links and such. If you don't have um, the Catalyst subscription, you can also just go onto the Google link and it would take you, that's, to the link of via Google, if you want to look more into that site. Okay, so, that's hubs. 
I'll also go and have a look at uh, cost sector, so you can just see that there's a slight difference in how this looks. So for education, instead of having that top 20, um, we've got a contract catered versus in-house split. But you can see here that we've split um, schools into and colleges into small, medium and large. Small being anything less than 200 pupils, large being anything greater than 750 pupils, uh, and medium is all the ones in between. So again, you would be able to break that down and look at it at site level. Or you could use some of the filters on the right. So if you just wanted to see which schools are under a certain local education authority. Let's have a look at Aberdeen City Council. You can see that there's 74 uh, schools that have a link to Aberdeen City Council. Um, and again, you could then drill down into that. So it's about really being able to look at the data and the insights in lots of different ways um, and being able to filter it down in whatever is relevant for you and to look at those sites and to look at the machines that are um, attached to those sites. So, and all the ways that we've we've split down the market that is all documented so if you have any questions um on on what do, what is a small school for example or what is a small hospital all of that is documented um and can be given to you as part of the subscription so you understand how the market is split up okay so i think that's that's all from me and I will stop, stop sharing. Uh, thank you very much, Nicola. And, and thank, thank you. you for a, a very clear uh, presentation to give us an understanding of uh, how the site works. And thanks also to Steve and Simon for the introductions there. Um, in the Q&A section, we'll move across and talk to Julie about how that data was collected from from that perspective but uh, what i'd like to do now is just to uh, give you a run through of the the, the sign up opportunities and how um that the program works and how you as members or if you're not a member of the fea how you can uh, access the the information um so in terms of what we're delivering here as nicholas said it is a complete picture of the installed base of equipment across refrigeration ware washing and cooking equipment um, it gives that product penetration by channel. Um, it gives the retrospective analysis of what the industry looked like pre-COVID. And we know from the, the business outlook research that we did last June, that a key challenge that members were facing was the need to look to different channels of distribution for products. And also the fact that the product mix was likely to change. So where can companies optimize their marketing and sales strategies and indeed their direct sales operations to, to pick up on that. Um, so that linked with a, a real insight into what's open in the market as of today helps save wasting wasting time on uh, on sites that, that won't have a potential to buy. Um, and, and Nicola, thank you for that, that regional aspect for sales. Uh, again, very much a focus of um, the, the work that can go on in terms of directing a sales force. And uh, if any of you were on the presentation that we had last week with SDS, and that was the FPA sales development um, solutions program of um, sales development within businesses, there's obviously a, an integration here of the data that you've just seen Nicola present and how that can work in terms of developing um, and delivering the, the sales strategy for a business. Um, so a, a unique set of data, and I use the word advisedly, is genuinely a unique set of data. Nothing exists in, exists in the market. And as uh, Simon said at, said at the head of the meeting, that there are a lot of reports around uh, on the market, overall sizes, but none of it gives you this 
grassroots granularity of detail that you can build a strategy on. So we have, uh, if I just pull up the next slide, one second, we'll, We have now the uh, the costs of the, the programme and uh, what is available to you. So it's an annual subscription product delivered online uh, straight to your uh, laptop, desktop, whatever it might be. Um, accompanied with quarterly industry insight management reports. All of that data that Nicola has just shown um, is dynamic and is changing. And what we will deliver in return for your subscription, as well as that data, is in that insight into what the key changes are compared to the previous quarter. So you'll be able to pick across the, the, the dynamics of those elements of the industry that are growing. And we know there are parts of the industry that are growing out there because of all this delivery, takeaway, et cetera. That's a dynamic that's changing the shape of the industry. You'll get that documentation to give you that uh, detailed insight to save you needing to troll through all of the figures in interpreting itself. Um, and the delivery cost there is a three for two offer, which is strictly for the next uh, calendar month until the 17th of March, which is to have the option to take the three categories that you see there for £1,750. That's obviously a saving of 875 over the individual product category cost. The other additional cost is for us to set um, you or your team up as users. And there can be as many users as you choose uh, to access the data. So it could be relevant for, for sales at a strategic level, um, for marketing, uh, for sales at a delivery point of view, for your salespeople out in the field, for production. There's a whole host of, of areas within the business that will value this data. So we've kept that deliberately low to allow you to maximize the data depending on where the individual is and what their particular aspect is uh, of needing to access that data. Um, after the 17th of March, it will be 875 per product category with the 150 per user license. And for any businesses uh, online today looking at this who aren't members, uh, for those three modules, it's 5,000 pounds plus the 150 pound desk license. And so that gives access to that uh, report. And I think it's not necessarily what the cost is of having the report, it's what the cost is of, of not having it. Because what we're seeking to do is deliver for members your competitive advantage to give you the opportunity to maximize uh, your sales and your operation um, within the, the challenges that the market's facing at the moment. They're the costs um, to access the sign up form. If you go to the FEA website, which is fea.org.uk, look for the information tab across the top and Adam's put this together for us and that will drop down on the industry insight page. And the process is a simple completion of the uh, Google form, which is uh, just the, the basic uh, details relating to you and your business. We then ask which package it is that you want. Do you want the three for two package? which is cooking, wear, washing and refrigeration, or just one of the individual elements of the package. And then how many desk licenses you will need uh, to, to uh, integrate with the, um, the program. Then you sign up to the terms and conditions, which are really to, to protect the IP of the FEA and also the catalyst data that is there. Um, it's fairly standard, but please do read through that. And if you have any questions, come back to us. And then on receipt of that form, Within four working days, we will have you up and running with your own admin portal to access that data. And then that subscription will be reviewed annually. Um, and if you need any help along the way, support and training is available um, to, to assist you with that. So we're seeking to um, provide it as your essential resource in these dynamic, uh, dynamic times. Um, we will put in this presentation out to all members. So please sign up and we'd be pleased to give you access as, uh, as soon as we're able. But uh, now what I'd like to do is move on to the uh, Q&A session, if I may. And uh, we'll uh, start off, and we've had some questions in. Please do keep them going, and we'll come back and pick up on them. But Julie, if I may, I'd like to start off with you. We, we've seen the, the, the fruits of your work, and uh, initially Steve Loughton's work in pulling this whole project together. 
could you just give us an, an overview of that data and how you solicited and how you used your contacts to uh, to deliver what we've just seen? Sorry, can you hear me? Yep. We yep, hear brilliant. You. Sorry. Um, I was unable to unmute there. Sorry, apologies. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thanks for inviting me along. Now, this has been um, a, uh, a labour of love, actually, I think it's ended up being, to be honest. Uh, it's been um, talking and engaging with the breadth of our industry, the data collection and inputs being obtained from a variety of sources, from specifications, room data sheets, drawings, and a wide uh, number of industry colleagues um, from members, of course, FEA members, from manufacturers, consultants, distributors, service companies, designers, professional bodies and associations, as well as operators themselves um, across uh, the breadth of um, the wider industry. So yeah, it's been um, very broad, very wide, and I'd just like to give a big thanks to all those people that have engaged with it and, um, and have, have um, been in contact with me and talked to me about their, their knowledge of, of the industry and the equipment within it. Yeah, uh, thanks, Julie. And uh, one of the questions that's come in, just to follow up on that, uh, do you just want to quickly outline the subcategories in wear washing for us, please? One of the questions has been asked. Joe, I've just seen that question, and having lived and breathed this for so long, can I remember the subcategories? <laughs> There's a number of them. <laughs> yeah. um, I've not got one printed in front of me. Uh, Nicola might yeah. be able to quickly answer that, I would have thought, because she's got access to it. Me to help you out there, yeah. um, so within wear washing, we've got two sort of subcategories. We've got dishwashers and we've got glass washers. Um, now I could either read out all of the product types now, or um, I wonder if it might be helpful that up on the FEA website, we do some screenshots for the other product categories um, so that the guys can, I know that I've only taken you through cooking and warming today, but just so they can see the detail of their own categories yeah i think that might be helpful rather than me just listing off um a load of the products now yeah um, we'll, we'll, we'll do that and it, it was under counter hood conveyor rack um all of the categories were there because it what uh, important i think for everybody to bear in mind the the product categories were all sourced from the work we did with the product group forums within the fea and that's our uh, reach into the, the penetration we have with members across the categories. So there won't be anything that's missed. Another question that's come in has shown that there are some zeros against some of the work that uh, Nicola showed earlier. Uh, I think the reference was to pizza ovens, um, which I think the category we were showing was pubs and bars. And I think less the view was of the product group forum, there wasn't a penetration into those areas. So that's the sort of work. So it, it needs interpreting and it's very relevant to the category. So that's the, uh, I think the real value of this. But uh, what I'll do, if I may, Simon, perhaps I could switch across to you in terms of um, where we came from this project. And we, we said at the start about the reports that are available that are all generalist. Where do you see this sort of work fitting within a, a company's strategic approach? to its sales or marketing operations, please? Uh, well, thanks, Keith. I mean, speaking from a personal perspective, I mean, you know, working for a, uh, in my career, working for a couple of companies that have uh, head offices uh, based in different countries. I mean, we are forever being asked the size of the market for, you know, specific product lines, specific market sectors. And, you know, you know, as we've spoken before that I've been invested quite a lot of money in the past on for some of these desktop reports that I think we all have, uh, which when you get them and they're very thick and glossy and uh, really don't generally tell you much that, as I said in the beginning, that you don't already know, they're usually out of date uh, and they usually focus around uh, information regards to the market leaders, but they're not specifically targeted at market sectors. They might give you a, 
a couple of sort of graphs that sort of expected sales of product into catering or hospitality, but that's about as depth in depth as it goes. Mm. Um, and for me, you know, especially with marketing budgets and sales, uh, you know, return on investment for marketing spend is becoming ever more mm. prevalent. And you know, you have to report and you have to justify. Uh, you know, the budgets that you've got to spend, which of course are being squeezed because sales have been uh, impacted certainly in the last uh, 12 to 14 months. Um, so what money you have got, you have to spend wisely. Uh, and knowing how to pinpoint that activity will certainly be helped by a report such as this. And also, of course, with the resources that we've got available to us in terms of sales guys on the road, you know, whether that's working with our dealer channel partners or looking at new avenues for new products, such as, you know, for instance, with us, with our beer dispenser, you know, we need to be able to identify where there are gaps in the market. Mm. And traditionally, there's been nothing available for us to be able to do that. Uh, with this sort of information available to us now, it will certainly help us to, to be more focused uh, and more, should I say, proactive in terms mm. of how we approach certain activities. Uh, and for me, this, you know, provides a, a sort of a bedrock for the strategy that you want to form uh, when you're putting together activities and campaigns for your sales team and your marketing team to work with. Yeah, thank you, Simon. Uh, now, Nicola, perhaps I could switch across to you just to um, give a brief. Kelly Barrell has asked, how frequently is the data updated? Um, and also, uh, we had a question in terms of the, the definition of the types of outlet. Um, do we have some more detail on that that we can provide please yes so the um, site data will be refreshed on a weekly basis um, and obviously that because it the, the back end of this report the machines are set up as a purse on a per site basis so that will in turn update the um, total machines when we update the site number so that's weekly um, and then we agreed that we would be reviewing the um, equipment numbers, um, so those sort of per site numbers on a quarterly basis, um, and those can be amended at that point. Okay. Um, and then to the second question about the definitions of how the sectors are split and the subsectors, yes, it is all documented. Um, so again, I can I can provide that. Um, so it's all it's all clear as to how, how, how that's worked out. Lovely. Thank you for that, Nicola. And, and I think we'll post those categories on the, the FEA website on the, the portal there that I, I referenced earlier. Julie, um, can I come across to you again, please? It, it, the, we've been asked a question on the split between gas and electric. Um, was that discussed? And I know we aren't showing it in the report, but um, what was the, the process of discussion there? Uh, also a question which I guess is a mix between the type of equipment and its application, the issue of fryers and whether they're tabletop or built in. Could you perhaps address those questions from, from Paul Godfrey for us? Thank you. Sorry. I think the host is switching us on and off. <laughs> All right. Sorry, the question on gas and electric. Um, we've not differentiated um, on gas and electric. Uh, the tabletop question on, on fryers, um, the, the, what we agreed on or the decision we came to was the tabletop more likely to be um, under the category of small equipment. Um, as opposed to key um, installed major equipment, if that helps. Mm -hmm. and, and another question that came up earlier was also about um, uh, accessories. Um, and we didn't look at accessories at this stage. We, we did see it, that there's a potential for that in future. We wanted to get the baseline work under, uh, underway on these three main categories first. But certainly, uh, it wouldn't be a problem to use that base data that we've got to interpret the sorts of accessories that may follow equipment. And Simon, I guess that's something we can discuss within the um, uh, statistics group as to whether that's um, uh, a requirement. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that in terms of where that might go, Simon. 
I, I think what I would reflect on, Kate, would be the initial meeting that we had, uh, Julie, Steve, myself, and uh, a number of other FEA members when we sat and debated how this should look. And I think we were we were at risk of perhaps trying to run before we could walk and making it too detailed mm. from the get-go. Um, and we had to rein, rein the ambition in a little bit to ensure that we've got a product that is, you know, workable, understandable, but is always, as I think Nicola's explained in her presentation, is always going to be refreshed and updated. And I think that's the beauty of this, is that it is a live document. It is going to be something that is forever being polished and, and honed as we go through. <clears throat> but, you know, I think the product that we've, you know, that we've delivered today is the start of something fantastic and will continue to improve. I mean, it's already delivering uh, information, I think, for me, certainly it was beyond my wildest dreams when we first started to look at this as an idea. Um, but I think there is always going to be the scope to develop it and, and increase the content within it. Mm. Uh, and of course, you know, we mentioned that there are three uh, more uh, modules under development. And I think, excuse me for, I can't remember, I think one of them is beverage, because I mentioned that there was a, uh, a mention in the chat room by Steve Buckmaster, of course, there will be beverage coming. Uh, I can't remember for the life of me what the other two are. My mind's a bit of a muddle at the moment. But, yeah. You know, there is there is always scope for, for you know, developing and certainly increasing the, the level of information, even down to accessories uh, as we move through and it becomes more established and we have more subscribers. Yeah, well, I think Julie can probably help us with that. Julie, what, what are the other categories that you um, uh, are working on at the moment with us? Please. So the uh, other categories are beverages, uh, ventilation and induction. Mm, okay. Uh, and we've had another question in from um, uh, somebody in terms of grease management uh, control, which again falls under a product group four and within the FEA. So certainly we can look at those, but these were the major pieces of work that we want to get underway. Um, Nicola, I'll, if I can come to you and then I'll, I'll ask you know, Steve perhaps to come in and comment um, following that, but we've, uh, it's an issue of data that's available in the market. And one of our uh, questioners has said that they've seen previous data stating four to 500,000 commercial kitchen sites, um, whereas the data that we just had on screen there showed 280,000. Uh, probably worth just a bit of analysis there. And also, if I can just ask a supplementary to that, um, it's asking whether we have a focus on the equipment installed in dark or ghost kitchens um, and where that fits within the overall reporting within Catalyst. Could you wrap those two together for us, please? Yeah, um, obviously I don't know where that other data uh, has come from, the 475, I think, thousand just said, but without knowing where that's come from and what is included within that, it would be very difficult for me to compare what we've included within our numbers versus what that number is. Obviously our database is from is a bottom-up perspective, so you can see all of the detail um, that that 288,000 is made up of. Um, quite often, I think, when there are other numbers that are banded around, they are done in other ways and, and not from a, a bottom-up view. Um, so that's pretty much all I can say on that. I, it's very difficult for me to compare one against the other. Um, with regard to the dark kitchens, I saw that question come up, and that was a great question. Um, we do have dark kitchens um, within our database and we can easily identify those. We've got those flagged up, um, but it might be worth actually, Julie and myself, looking at dark kitchens as a separate um, subsector, particularly if there is more equipment that is posted into those types of sites. And, um, Admittedly, that's not something that we've looked at as a separate subsector within QSR um, previously. So, but it, so that's a really good point. I'll, I'll pick that up with Julie. Okay. Uh, thanks for that, Nicola, and, and thanks, Julie, as well. Um, Steve, um, uh, an exciting development for the FEA. Yeah, hi, thank you, Keith, uh, and thank you for unmuting me there. 
Um, yeah, I, like I said in, in my introduction, I mean, this is a piece of work that's been uh, been ongoing for the last two or three years. I know that obviously Simon, as, as uh, head of the statistics team, has, has been you know very much pushing it forward. And what started as a general chit chat at a conference a couple of years or so ago has now, for me, sort of really shown where we as an association can work collaboratively. Uh, you know, pulling information together. Um, for me, this is a, you know, almost the first step with the launch of the first three modules and over time and uh, more involvement from, from members, you know, we, we can build on this and, and have this really as a, as a great asset for not only for us to use within the FBA, but also for um, really being seen as a leading light in the industry of, a, of the go-to point to, to understand the level of products placed on the market. Um, you know, as Simon said, we all get uh, bombarded by emails, you know, week in, week out with selling us data lists or selling us uh, invitee lists and whatever. But, you know, the way that this interface with the Catalyst database for me is, is, is um, you know, is, is above and beyond any value mm. um, purely because it's up to the minute live data information and it's not historical information. It's not uh, generic information. And, and for us, I think as an association, can really set us apart, uh, you know, and be seen as that uh, that go-to point for for, for mm. finding out factual information of product in the market. Mm. Yeah, thank you. And I know when we we were talking earlier, we were saying how the this basis of of data and information how it fulfills our our broader industry objectives. And I mean, in principle, in relation to the the, the five point plan that we've got um, to try and get more energy efficient equipment into the market by knowing the installed base of equipment that's out there we can do some derived information which looks at energy use and what needs to happen to transition to net zero carbon by 2050 and you know, as we're saying one of those changes has got to happen in the next 10 years and the work we're doing elsewhere with the uh, with bays on the energy technology list and, and with their consultants enables to, us to look more analytically of what's installed within the market to make those those judgment calls of, for what's in the best interest of the industry. And just to add to that, Keith, I mean, certainly from 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 you know your point of view and our point of view of, of lobbying at government level, um, you know, really does show that that we as a, a, a as a team of, of individual companies and individual members, you know, can work together to to provide this level of data and, and give credence to to those arguments that we put forward on on an actual factual basis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good, thank you for that. Um, let me just check, see whether we've had any questions in. Um, we've uh, had the categories covered. Um, let's have a look. We've got an answer back to a, a question at 11.30. Let's just go back. Oh, um, yeah, as a question, is there an opportunity to have a more detailed presentation prior to signing up? Um, what I've seen today is impressive but i uh, like to see the data on a sector I know well to give me the confidence in the information. Um, I think, if Julie, I, I don't think we have any problem with that because what we're looking to do is improve the representation of the data. Um, and I think we, we're keen to have that engagement and support because this is the work that Julie's collected together over the last year, together with, with Steve Loughton in the early days. And, I think we recognise it won't be perfect in every aspect, Julie. Yeah, quite agree. Would welcome input from anybody that um, wants to share their insights. Mm, yeah, okay. Good, okay. Um, one last uh, call for any, any questions, if there are any. I think we've covered um, pretty much everything that's been asked of us there. So thank you very much for our, our panellists uh, to our panelists rather for um, their, their detailed observation and responses there. Um, I will, if I may, just go back to um, the, the, the final sign off, uh, which is the um, elements of where you can access the information. So go to the FEA website, look under information, and then under FEA industry insight. Uh, Adam's put the resources together there for us to use. Um, if you have any questions, if you would email Jocelyn, jocelyn.carr at fea.org.uk, and uh, she'll be able to field it to the team as necessary um, to collate that. Um, and I will, if I may, I'll, I just pulled together a couple of reports that have come across our desk in the last, uh, or just this week, in fact, um, which I think are perfect timing in relation to the, the data that we've got here and its use. And one from Peter Backman's report. 
um, about identifying the new trends that will have to be faced. And clearly it's difficult to separate these trends into precise collections, but the future restaurant will nevertheless be defined by these trends. And I think that's exactly what the, the link with Catalyst delivers um, aligned with the information that we've got from members and those influential parties that Julie's exchanged information with to be able to give a dynamism to data that means it's not out of date. Uh, I know when we, we, Simon originally proposed this project, it, it had to be something that was live and dynamic and not something that was bought once and then becoming obsolete as every day passed. And, and we've seen the dynamics of the last year uh, really address that. And the, the other was a, a Lumina report, and we'll put this out to members um, if they approve its uh, distribution, which I think they will. 16% um, of eating and drinking out occasions in no November were click and collect. Um, drinks only occasions remain a key opportunity for delivery. Um, nearly a quarter of eating and drinking out occasions in November 2020 were delivery. Um, these sorts of dynamics affect the shape of the market, the response to those consumer needs, and that in turn affects the shape of the equipment that's being used uh, and where it's in operation and where it isn't. And I think a key element of what we have here is the live data with sites that are open and trading, as well as enabling you to identify those parts of the market that aren't trading. And as we know, it's going to be a staged recovery. So having this as a as a, a tool to uh, use within your operation from the aspects I mentioned earlier is going to be invaluable. So there just to reiterate uh, before we sign off, the three for two offer for members is the 1750 um, for all three categories plus the 150 pounds per user. Um, for the individual market segments, they're 875 plus 150 pound per user license and that's an annual license. So that's it, the use of that data for a year. That three for two offer is only until the 17th of March and that will be strictly adhered to. Um, and if you're not a member, come and talk to us about becoming a member of the FEA and the sort of work we're doing that help your business uh, and provide tangible benefits in so many different aspects, but all based around the information that we can deliver, the involvement that you get from that and the influence that, that we can exact with on a, within the market as the independent and authority voice of the uh, food service equipment industry. So it really just leaves me to thank the, um, uh, the, the team at the FEA of, of Jocelyn, Adam and Sarah Jane for their help and support in putting this together. Uh, to thank our panelists, Steve Hobbs, Simon Frost, Nicola Gallagher, and also Julie Barker for their time this morning. But uh, thanks most of all to you, all of you for joining us this morning. Thanks very much and have a good day.